Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. Thank you all for joining us on another episode of EP Live. We want to dedicate this show to Gary Kurtz, who recently passed away. And, of course, he was a producer that worked with George Lucas on Star Wars and Empire and American Graffiti. So a part of that family for a very long time. Thank you for your work, Gary Kurtz, and our condolences to your family and friends. Now, this rundown is going out to Lazy Healthy Dude, who says... Yay, more Blake. Let's get started with your rundown. Some surprising news has come in about Devil May Cry 5, and it might make you want to tell the game to go to hell. The devilish new game will have multiplayer, but the bad news is that it will also have in-game microtransactions. That's according to GameSpot, which claims to have spotted microtransactions in a behind-closed-doors demo at the Tokyo Game Show over the weekend. Players will have the ability to unlock new skills using an in-game currency called Red Orbs, which can be earned by playing the game, but players will also have the option of buying Red Orbs with real-life money. This means players can level up faster than others by spending money, when asked by GameSpot if this makes DMC5 pay to win, director Hideaki Itsuno promised that it won't ruin the experience and they're just doing it as a way to give players the option of speeding up the progression. It remains to be seen if this will create the same backlash as other games like Metal Earth Shadow of War and Star Wars Battlefront 2. Devil May Cry 5 lands in March and here's what's going to happen. It will be bad news for the game. This is going to be a stench that sort of gravitates with this title uh, and now it's part of the hype around it, you know, the negative hype around it. And Capcom should immediately change course. They should immediately dump this whole idea of uh, speeding up progression. However they're going to frame it, they should just stop that right now. It's not going to be good for DMC5. The game has got great love, and people are like, oh my god, it's a return to form. But this stench will affect this game, and I hope Capcom is listening. Um, and it's not necessarily because all of it is an awful idea, and certainly that, the, you know, probably some of the money earned from this is meant to be, uh, you know, about future content and it's meant to sort of keep the team paid and employed and working on new material in DMC. I get all of those things, but you just don't want this stench around there. You don't want to put your customers in this uh, this position of being, uh, you know, pissed off or you having to be defensive about your title. Just make it something that's going to be about joy and people being very, very happy. This is, it's too precarious a time to be going out there and uh, just infuriating your customer base. And if you can't be explicit and clear about what these microtransactions or loot boxes or whatever else is involved with your game, you're going to get crucified. You're going to get hammered. And if, if you know, it, it might not be something that directly affects the sales of this particular game but it's going to stay with the game if it's handled improperly and it sounds like it already has started to be that which is uh, unfortunate it's getting very convoluted and very complicated and um, I hope that the industry can figure out a way to make it more streamlined and more consumer facing and consumer friendly and if you've got to get your producers and your creative people to, to help define your uh, your monetization models you're doing it wrong. So that's that's my hot take on this. And let's see what Capcom responds with and, and how we find out more. But this is going to be circulating all over uh, the Internet today. And it's uh, not going to make people at Capcom too happy, I'll tell you. Netflix is making their own deal with the devil in a bid to win new subscribers. The streaming giant is apparently joining forces with Blizzard Entertainment for an animated Diablo series. No official announcements have been made, and the news is coming from an unlikely source. Andy Cosby, founder of the comic book publisher Boom Studios, announced on Twitter that he's in talks to produce the new series, only to delete the tweets a few hours later. It appears that he jumped the gun and leaked the project prematurely, so we'll let you know when official announcements are made. Diablo wouldn't be the first video game adaptation for Netflix. They already have another animated series based on Castlevania, and I love that Castlevania show. This would be a very cool new... Uh, you know, feather in the cap for Netflix and a good thing for Blizzard. But here's what I know about uh, Blizzard working with other people and, uh, you know, sharing their IP. Uh, they're they're not great at that. <laughs> they, they, they are a fastidious company that really likes to, you know, have ownership over the way that their brands and their titles and their characters are uh, utilized in other, uh, you know, media. I think this is probably happening, but I think Blizzard is probably 
overseeing the whole thing. And I mean, they're master storytellers over there. They're great at creating lore. And uh, so I, I have to imagine that somebody like this, this may have lost uh, Andy Cosby his job <laughs> on Diablo. Um, I have to imagine that they're really sort of policing the whole thing to make sure that uh, uh, it, it is up to their standards and up to their spec because they're, you know, understandably protective over the things that they have created. And uh, but I'm excited. I think that would be really rad. I actually might be wearing a Diablo T-shirt. Uh, oh, I am. Look at that. I'm wearing a Diablo shirt. How I, how crazy is that? That's coincidence right there. Okay, several cool pieces of news have come in about Red Dead Redemption 2 with the open world western game riding into town next month. Rockstar is kicking the promotional blitz into gear. First up, they've announced a bundle that includes the game with a PS4 Pro for 500 bucks Canadian. Don't show me that, Blake. That will be available in North America and Europe, but there's no word if the Xbox One will get a similar bundle. Next up, Rockstar has also confirmed that the game will have an optional first person mode. Just like with Grand Theft Auto 5, players will be able to switch back and forth between third and first person on the floor and it will work in both single player and online. Speaking of online, the game's multiplayer component known as Red Dead Online won't be available when the game ships on October 26th. It will instead launch a month later as a beta with Rockstar using the extra time to get the servers ready. They have a good reason for taking their time. When they launched Grand Theft Auto Online back in 2013, it caused massive glitches with the main game, so they don't want to repeat the same mistakes. Uh, am I excited for Red Dead Online? I am, but I'm also... Um, not skeptical or you know, I'm reserved. My enthusiasm for playing Red Dead Online is reserved. I found that Red Dead 1, Red Dead Redemption 1, was uh, such a, a great personal escape for me and a journey for me. It was almost like I got to jump into Westworld, you know? It was, um, it was such a great trip through the Old West, and I just felt like I was having this story kind of unfold for me, and I was helping to shape the story, and I was really, really transported. And that's what I'm looking forward to the most with Red Dead Redemption 2, and I've said this before, but the, uh, you know, the historical kind of uh, calibration of the game and, and its, uh, its period setting kind of limits the amount of crazy experimentation that, that you can do within that universe. Obviously, you know, they don't have vehicles like they have vehicles in Grand Theft Auto. You won't have flight. You won't have, you won't have lots of things uh, that kind of escalate the insanity in Grand Theft Auto Online. You're going to be doing, you know, presumably lots of bank robberies and chasing after trains and, you know, chasing, you know, posseing up and chasing after outlaws and things like that. All of it's going to be fun. Um, but I don't know. There, there is a limitation in terms of how many different areas they can explore, but clearly what, what they have now are the, um, the you know, engines that can run, like the in-game engines that can run a, a tremendous amount more detail in these worlds, right? So there probably will be, and I've read that there's gonna be like every single non-player NPC character in the game, non-playable character, uh, is somebody that you can go up and have a conversation with, you know? Uh, I heard that the horse testicles in the game actually shrink and grow depending on the weather systems that they've employed in the game. Like, there is just so much more refinement. I can't believe I said horse, tes horse testicles on uh, EP. I think that might be a first. But there's so much more refinement in um, the way that they've structured this game than anything else that we've seen before. But, you know, if it... it like, if online just devolves into jump on a horse and chase those guys, and then jump on a horse and chase those guys, and then jump on a horse and... It's... I don't know. It's I don't think it's going to be the same as hopping into a submarine and then jumping into a jet and, you know, doing uh, huge corporate bank jobs and things like that. Um, but we'll see. Uh, you know, Rockstar doesn't make bad games. They've got a pretty good track record. I'm excited. The next James Bond movie has been delayed, but another British spy franchise has snuck in to take its place. The third Kingsman movie is set to hit theaters on November 9th, 2019, the exact same day recently vacated by the next Bond film. Matthew Vaughn, who directed and co-wrote both of the previous Kingsman movies, will be back to helm the third one, with stars Taron Egerton and Colin Firth back in the lead roles. It's worth pointing out that with Kingsman 3 landing in late 2019, it will make it one of the first big Fox movies to be released in theaters after the studio's acquisition by Disney. Disney is finished. This means Kingsman 3 will essentially be a Disney movie, so fans will likely be very interested to see what impact that might have on the finished film. I liked the uh, the Kingsman uh, 2 film. I wasn't blown away by it, but Kingsman 1 is excellent. 
Um, and I hope that this new one kind of uh, veers back into that territory. It almost went too zany and over the top with the second one, which is kind of hard to put on a franchise like Kingsman, but it just it got a little too crazy. Too much Elton John in Kingsman 2. Uh, but uh, congrats to, to Mark Miller and also to uh, Matthew Vaughn, who would be an excellent choice to direct a James Bond movie. Maybe he'll be back, or maybe he'll be in that franchise after he's done with Kingsman and after uh, Daniel Craig leaves. Who knows? But uh, that's, that's a pretty good coup. Uh, look at the publicity that they got just by taking that release date. Very good job, my friends, over at to what used to be Fox. All right, you guys, that's going to do it for our rundown. Now it's time for This Day in Everything Cool. Welcome to This Day in Everything Cool for September 24th. Shocking. Positively shocking. On this day in 1994, PC Gamers got a very shocking new title. The sci-fi horror game System Shock was released on MS-DOS machines with a Mac OS version following two months later. Developed by Looking Glass Studios and produced by Warren Spector, System Shock built on the premise of their previous games, namely the Ultima Underworld series, to give players an in-depth RPG told from a first-person perspective. System Shock took things to new heights. The gameplay was a lot more smooth and responsive, with players having more freedom to navigate the 3D environments, and the developers also doubled down on the concept of emergent gameplay. Most of the items and weapons could be used in multiple ways, which encouraged players to experiment and come up with new ways of interacting with the world around them. System Shock revolutionized the game world, and its ideas of player freedom and RPG-style character progression influenced countless games that follow. Looking Glass Studios continued exploring similar concepts with the sequel System Shock 2, as well as other projects they created like the original Thief. Another System Shock developer, Ken Levine, went on to create a spiritual successor called Bioshock in 2007. The original System Shock was remastered in 2015, and a full remake built from the ground up is slated to arrive in 2020. All right, you guys, System Shock was a, uh, a shock to the system when it came out. Sorry about that. Uh, I have been playing a game called Valkyria Chronicles 4 on uh, the uh, PlayStation 4. What do you want me to do, Blake? I can't. I can't make that bigger. I don't know what's going on. Uh, I, let me start that again so you get a clean cut, okay? I've been playing Valkyria Chronicles 4 on the PlayStation 4, and uh, it is a beautiful game, as every fan of Valkyria Chronicles would expect. It is uh, uh, a strategy... Don't forget it. I like game. there's strategy any chance JRPG. of that. Um, with a lot of really um, dramatic cut sequences that take us into uh, these conflict uh, situations where you have control of a bunch of units. And it's set in uh, an alternate World War II kind of reality uh, where you play um, part of this group called the Federation. You're like this little troop called uh, the the E class or something like that, or or the the E the E group, um, and you are facing against the Empire, and so it's basically it's kind of like you're fighting a bunch of uh, cartoonish Nazis. Um, and so what you've got to do is you've got to command a bunch of your troops, and you've got lancers, which are all right against tanks. You've got um, grenadiers, uh, which are or grenad grenadiers, grenadier. I don't say that word very often, um, who can uh, blow up a bunch of uh, bad guys or tanks or whatever in sort of uh, the sort of area effect thing. They can drop it in. It's kind of like a mortar. Um, you've also got uh, scouts who can uh, cruise along inside of your battlefields a little bit further and scout up the area and take some shots. Uh, but they're not that especially that strong. Um, and you've also got um, uh, engineers who are kind of like the scouts, but uh, they can refill ammo and they can repair stuff. You can control a tank in there as well. And uh, you play uh, as a bunch of these different characters because um, you command each one of the units. But uh, you're basically in the shoes of Claude, who is leading... Uh, the E troop, and uh, I don't know if it's a troop or class, it's something. Uh, and you're leading the the uh, the rest of the people in under your command against all of these uh, different oppressors out there. And you've got to try to sneak in, uh, not get seen in a lot of these different battlefields, uh, take out some of their sort of um, forward patrols, and then flank them as best you can. You have to keep your leader characters alive. Um, if you do lose them, you're going to have to replay missions over and over. Again, which is incredibly frustrating. I uh, had to do that. 
Um, and, uh, you know, what's incredibly satisfying about this game is that the combat is, uh, it really works. This, it, it, you have a little bit of control of the character, so you've got a little bit of this sort of third-person action element in there. So it's all about positioning and where you place your, your character before you go into the targeting mode. Uh, but you have a sense of um, agency. Like, you have a real sense of, like, you, you, you know how this battle is going to unfold. Uh, of course, there is uh, a little bit of a rolling the dice element every time you do go into targeting mode. Sometimes the shots that you think are perfectly lined up will not hit, which is par for the course with strategy titles. Um, and then, of course, after you've completed all of the turns, you've used all of your action points and your command points, the enemy has a chance to counterattack you. And there's also counterattacks that happen in real time as you're uh, repositioning your characters. All of that stuff, all of the on-the-field combat is really, really enjoyable. And I, I, it's very much analogous to the, uh, and very much in line with the first Valkyria Chronicles game, which I think came out about 10 years ago now. Uh, the art style, everything, the, the look it evokes, uh, the, the, the moods that it evokes, all of it are very reminiscent of the early days of Valkyria Chronicles, which is good news for fans. Uh, but it doesn't really progress the game uh, you know, concepts much farther than the first game. It's like they took the first game, put in new characters, a lot of the same kind of background of the uh, the, the overall story of Valkyria Chronicles is kind of the same, uh, but it's from a different perspective this time. Uh, but if you played the first one, you're going to be very familiar with the way that things unfold in this game. There are some things that bug the hell out of me. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll use action points... Um, sporadically by getting stuck on the geometry, which really bugged me, like trying to maneuver a tank around stuff or maneuver characters. Uh, sometimes there's mines and things like that that you, your, your camera just isn't positioned properly. That's a little user area, but a user error, but uh, you can walk onto things because the camera isn't perfectly positioned and, and then suddenly you've got to go and rescue that character. Uh, there is permadeath in this game as well if you don't get to those characters and get a nurse in there to extract them. Um, which sucks, but you can be smart and avoid all of that. Uh, but so uh, managing my action points and not sort of squandering them by, you know, improper positioning bugged me. Um, I also was a little bit perturbed by the unskippable animations and things like that in this game as well. And when you have to replay a mission three or four times because you've let one of your leaders die and you've got to see the tutorial bits pop up over and over again, it just drives you crazy. Or just even the the uh, you, you know the the speech bubbles and the character bubbles, all of that stuff I love normally. It's really cool, and I I, I actually kind of got into the story. There is definitely this sense of uh, uh, learning to have compassion for your characters. They're all young characters. They're all seeing the horrors of war. Maybe not for the first time, but there are definitely some neophytes in here. And there's people that, like uh, Nage, who is this sniper, has like st sometimes gets stage fright. And so she misses shots because she gets nervous when she's out in the middle of the battlefield. And so your, your heart gets kind of tugged a little bit as you're playing this. But it's also got some weird, creepy kind of dynamics in there. Raz, in particular, is this uh, gung-ho, this sort of uh, jerky character who is like slapping his uh, his you know female soldiers' butts and always just saying everything's a shit show and then running into combat and um, just offending people left, right, and center. And it was like, wow, man, they're really going for it. And what's weird is the juxtaposition of the the odd music choices where it's all just happy, bouncy, loopy music and and. Uh, Raz is just being an asshole, uh, and so it's kind of hard to care for him, but then, you know, he's a shock trooper with uh, quite a bit of uh, ability, and so in the next sequence, when you're actually on the battlefield, you'll feel find yourself using Raz all the time, because he does really kick some ass out there, so there's some weird dichotomy of uh, liking some of these characters, feeling for them, and I, I, I don't know if um, some of the over, overly sexualized kind of moments in here, like uh, Claude mistakenly looks under a female uh, soldier's dress and gets all embarrassed and she gets all uh, all embarrassed and and uh, I don't know if the, the 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 game makers were kind of making a comment on the fact that these are young people and they're sort of dealing with their hormones as well as the horrors of war at the same time um, but it certainly makes you pause and think and go well I've never really encountered that kind of storytelling before with one of these games uh, which was kind of cool and it gives its own charm gives the game its own charm 
And, and quite frankly, I think it's just a, uh, it's a, it's a really fun escape. I played it on the PlayStation 4. I didn't get a Switch code, but this seems like the perfect experience to be able to, uh, to play with you, be, uh, take anywhere and play it anywhere you want to because it's kind of a storybook kind of, uh, you know, way that it's presented and, and the, the whole framework for the game is you're leafing through pages of a book, which sort of fits with the, uh, the watercolor art style of the game, which is, again, gorgeous. Um, I did feel, though, that there was a game to be made with Valkyria Chronicles where you strip away a lot of the storytelling and you just get right down to the basics because commanding your troops and, uh, you know, taking turns with the enemy AI was super fun. And I would have loved to, you know, just get down to kind of like a... Uh, a more elaborate Advance Wars kind of vibe with this experience. And I also feel like there's a missed opportunity for multiplayer here, but I think Sega's in a bit of a um, reinvention mode with this franchise. They just want to bring people back to it. And do I think it's worth your time? 100%. It's really addictive. It's really well made. Uh, it's beautiful art style, cool music, and it's unique, you know? And we don't really have a lot of these... Uh, turn-based strategy experiences, especially uh, of this ilk, which are approachable and accessible. This isn't like Civilization or XCOM or something like that. This is uh, a lot more accessible, and all of the, uh, the uh, embedded storytelling also draws you in. It's terrific. It's not perfect, uh, but I want more, and I hope that this is a success, and maybe we'll get some cool DLC or some kind of uh, after-the-fact multiplayer mode or something like that. For now, I'm giving Valkyria Chronicles 4 an 8 out of 10. All right, now it's time for a buried treasure. One of the games that launched with the PlayStation 4 when it first came out was a cool, small shooter called Rezogun from Housemark. This was a game that was very much evocative of the 80s uh, side-scrolling sci-fi shooters where you control the ship and you're blasting away at all kinds of voxel-created enemies. Lots of, you know, flashy special effects on screen and you were saving little characters and stuff as you went along. And obviously the progression of enemies got tougher and tougher. It's absolutely a bullet hell experience where the screen will be filled with all kinds of projectiles that you have to avoid, all kinds of cool maneuvers that you're going to have to pull off, and you get power-ups as you go through the game as well, which are equally flashy and make you feel like a badass. Of course, the music was also very uh, electronic-based, very rhythmic-based, so you got into this funky zen groove. And I remember talking to the developers that were bringing this game out that uh, they were saying that the videos made of this game were going to be larger in file size than Rezogun was. It was just itty bitty for a PlayStation 4 title. Uh, but I think it also showcased, you know, the power of the machine. There were lots and lots of different objects just flying around in every direction, and it was absolutely fun to play. And it's, you know what? It's still just as fun to play. Rezogun is absolutely a buried treasure. Man, we've got a lot of comments in the chat. It's great to see everybody. Adrian Leon is there. Gamer Freak 84, Jordan Cunningham, uh, Magnavox 1972, Paul Casilio. Uh, uh, who else is in here? We've got Tyler Fisher. Good to see you. Taz is in there. Uh, somebody brought up. Uh, they love the Batman action figure on here. I can't find it in the in the uh, comments. You guys have been chatty. Um, this is Batman Ascension, I believe, is the character's uh, name from Mezco's 112 line. They, they, it was actually a, uh, a Toy Fair exclusive that they gave to me. Thank you, Mezco. I love the 112 stuff, and this figure is badass. Um, speaking of badass, our own Bear Safi, Baruti, is back on EP from PAX. Here's Windjammers 2. We're talking all about Wind Jammers 2. I cannot believe this franchise is coming back. I'm such a huge fan. I'm here with Cyril, yes. who is the CEO of uh, .emu, and we, I just got to try the demo, and I had so much fun. The yeah. heart of Wind Jammers is absolutely there, but why do you think you know this is the right time for this franchise to come back? Well, actually, it's been a long time that we've been plan planning that. This, yeah. you know, like we're a huge fan ourselves at uh, the office uh, when we we started to work on the first one on the adaptations that we did on the PS4 and the PS Vita. We already had in mind to do a sequel. We wanted to see first, like, to build the community, to gather people around the first title, to bring it back, to show it to people that didn't know it. And they were like, okay, that's the timing is right. Now let's work on the second one. There's a lot of other games that tried to replicate 
you know, the yes. heart of the original yes. game. What do you think that they just couldn't get right that you are trying to, you know, accomplish with Windjammers 2? So, Windjammers is super easy to understand. Yeah. When you watch and you don't know the game, you understand like in two minutes what's going on and what's the goal and how to play. So it's basically air hockey or pong with mixed with like Street Fighter. So it's a versus fighting game. So it's super intense, it goes fast, but it's easy to understand, but very deep at the same time. The more you play, the deeper it gets and you can understand that it's not only about like going back and forth with the frisbee but it's also a lot of mind games you have a lot of different techniques you need to trick your uh, opponent you know so that's what makes it so special it's easy to understand easy to see but at the same time super deep with like awesome mechanics that was set up back in 94. yeah it's great i mean i already saw the implementation of something called an ex move so yes. we now have supers on top of the already you know the counter supers that you're able to throw before you guys are trying to look to go kind of competitive with this game are you trying to look into the esports scene and you know, make, you know, a, a Windjammers yeah. championship through the year? For esports, we already created the Flying Power League, which is our official esports league for oh, Windjammers. Wow. We did the first season and ended at EVO uh, this year. We were on main stage uh, <laughs> for the top four. And of course, with Windjammers 2, we want to continue that, you know, to continue with the Flying Power League. Uh, we, we're going to do season two for Windjammers 1, uh, but uh, probably Windjammers 2 will come to season three, hopefully. We want to push it super far. And like in terms of mechanics, in terms of what's going to be in the game in Windjammers 2, it's going to be all around competition, around competitive gameplay, and online aspect of Windjammers 2 would be super important. I want to talk a little bit about the art style. Uh -huh. Why this direction for Windjammers? Was there a particular reason the team wanted to go with this, you know, very fancy, flashy style, yes. as I like to call it? So uh, basically, uh, Simon Perrin, who is the, the lead artist on uh, Windjammers 2, uh, he loves pixel art, he's really good at pixel art, but he also loves like classic animation, and especially like the SNK Capcom era uh, for fighting games. For example, Street Fighter Third Strike, you know, those kind of slick animations you know and so basically that was the idea we're like kind of thinking about it and it's like no I want to do hand-drawn classic animation because it's gonna look so nice you know like uh, with the moves of the characters just was a perfect fit we saw you know Capcom make a pretty big mistake with Street Fighter 5 and they released quite a bare-bones product where you know they didn't really have an arcade mode and have any single player can we expect you know something single player for those people who have never played Windjammers before, whether it be a tutorial or like a mini story mode. Yes, absolutely. So basically the original Windjammers had an arcade mode, which you just had to beat like every character and you had the mini games in between every two characters. So of course that's something that's gonna be in Windjammers 2, but we're gonna enhance it. And uh, of course the story mode is something that we are considering a lot, but uh, we don't, we're not sure how yet we're gonna do it, but uh, we have a lot of very, very cool ideas, especially with the lore of Windjammers that doesn't really exist. So we have everything to <laughs> create yeah. it was some awesome ideas for that oh i'm so excited i want to know all about the windjammers <laughs> lore but you guys have a lot to be proud of i had so much fun with the yeah, demo thank today you. Thank you and i actually didn't expect to try it at all today yeah. but uh i can't wait and uh windjammers too when can we expect it uh 2019 2019Good to see you, Blade Blur. Listen, I got a couple of uh, uh, T-shirt uh, wearing photos, and you know I love those. So if you ever buy a T-shirt or a, a mug or a, a hoodie or whatever that has EPN on it, make sure you send it to us by Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or whatever, and we'll find you and we'll put you in the show. This is uh, this is Josh here and his wife, uh, who goes by uh, Selena Double O Kyle, uh, Instagrammed me and said, uh, thank you for uh, saying hello to my husband. And, and we got she got the shirt for her husband, which is so sweet. And so they posted the picture, and it's very cool. And then, uh, crazy thing here, picture of, of me with, uh, with Josh ages ago, which is really cool, uh, when I did the blonde highlights. Should I do the blonde highlights again? I guess that's, a, uh, that's an EPN chat poll right there. It's been 2008, yes. <laughs> and then this is Paul Adamson, and I don't know who this guy is. I think he was just happy to see... Uh, no, that's Rob Schneider from Fat Expo, which is pretty rad. Uh, it's crazy to see the EPN logo next to famous people like that, which, uh, which is... Is totally surreal. Uh, okay, very cool. We uh, we have one more review on the run for you in this episode. It is on uh, Amazon's Jack Ryan show. Shoot me. I dropped this. We all die.
I didn't know if I was going to get into Amazon Prime's new take on Jack Ryan, but I watched an episode, then I watched half of the second episode, and then I watched all the episodes. I binged this thing like crazy. It was a literal binge. It wasn't a for-work binge. It was, uh, i am got to get through this story. This is really compelling. It's really getting to me. And uh, kudos to everybody involved with this. Carlton Cuse is one of the showrunners on this uh, new take on Jack Ryan. And when John Krasinski was cast, I was thinking, how are they going to incorporate comedy into the Tom Clancy milieu? You know, how are they going to make this all kind of make sense with the kind of performer we know John Krasinski to be? How am I doing? But of course, he has beefed up considerably physically uh, since 13 hours, and he's not afraid to take off a shirt and show it off uh, a la like, something like Ben Affleck. If you got a body like that, of course, you're going to want to show it off as much as possible. But it also kind of speaks to the fact that the character is a uh, an ex-Marine, and he's also a rowing aficionado, so he's uh, he's very buff and beefy and uh, has a, uh, you know, like a statistician's mind, so he can remember all the tiny details. Everybody comes to him for... Uh, you know their fantasy league picks uh, for uh, baseball because he's got those stats right there. He's kind of like a Spock fused with you know he's not quite like a like an Arnold Schwarzenegger or something like that, but he's a tough guy. He can handle himself, but he doesn't know that he can, and that's kind of cool. One of the characters in the show says, you're you're a, a wolf disguised as a sheep, and that's a pretty good, uh, you know, summation of the character, but it also kind of sort of paints a portrait of the two-dimensional quality of Jack Ryan. What makes this show interesting and why I was compelled is uh, all the supporting cast that's around him. Timothy Hutton is kind of puffing out his gut and kind of pretending to be this I mean he's older for sure but it, he's playing like this old uh, you know Washington wonk who uh, uh, decides the fate of people but more as a careerist more as somebody that's going to kind of position himself to m- do better in the Washington uh, establishment. Wendell Pierce plays this guy that has been uh, beaten down and had to make some very tough choices. He's uh, Jack Ryan's superior officer, and uh, he is terrific in this show. He's a man of very few words. He's acerbic, uh, but he's fun to watch, and he's as quick with his words and his wit as he is with his gun. Like, when he is pulled into action, it's like, holy crap, that guy dealt with that. Get on the plane. The reason, though, why this show kind of works is that it doesn't paint the portrait of uh, there's terrorists in this show, but it doesn't paint them and portray them as uh, paper cutouts, you know? They actually have a lot of backstory and a lot of history. There's uh, a lot of family kind of interwoven in this. You start to see uh, the plans come together for something that is horrific and, and something does go off that is just utterly shocking, but it's also humanized and it's also contained in a kind of a, you know, a realism that, that draws you even closer, you know? You really are kind of like, what the hell is going to happen? to these characters. Are they going to survive? Are they going to live? And the deaths uh, have repercussions in this show. I mean, there are a lot of uh, deaths that just happen to, you know, cop number one or cop number two and stuff. But even those, like the characters take a moment to kind of look at the the people that have fallen and the camera doesn't shy away from it. There's there's a, you know, a little sex and violence in the show as well. The show does ask you to believe some pretty ridiculous things towards the end. I think it's always tough to kind of finish these things, especially if you're going to try to paint a portrait of a lone guy that's sort of bucking the system that ends up toppling the big bad, uh, which this show devolves into for sure. Uh, but I think the path to get us to the end is more interesting than the end. And I think you can say that about almost every one of these counterterrorism programs or, or movies out there. What we get out of Jack Ryan is more interesting at the end of the series than what we start off with. You know, there is some, some character stuff to mind. There is a human cost to all of this, and, and uh, it was... You know, it was fun to watch. Even if this is familiar territory, even if we've seen Jack Ryan many times before. We know who you are. And John Krasinski is no Harrison Ford, I will definitely say that. I was still very impressed with Amazon Prime's take. I'm going to give Jack Ryan an 8.5 out of 10. Yeah, I was obsessed with Jack Ryan. Uh, I really binged it like crazy yesterday. Pretty much sat in front of my TV watching that show. (laughs) Like you just feel like such a lazy person when you're doing that. But it was great. Uh, I really had a good time with that show. Okay, you guys, we're going to do something we haven't done yet, really, on uh, Let's Play and Chat. We're going to do a little versus, a little head-to-head. Haven't played either of these games, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to play one game of FIFA and one game of uh, Pro Evolution Soccer 2019. They're both loaded up on this uh, PlayStation 4 Pro. 
Uh, let's see how they run. And we're just going to go into, like, I'm going into kickoff. I'm playing Italy versus France. I'm playing Italy. I love Italy. Hello to all my Italian friends out there. I like France too, but Italy, I got married there. I had my, uh, my birthday there this year. Love the country. All right. Food. Have you guys gone to Italy? Oh, my God, the food. Okay, here we go. Let's, uh, let's jump in. This is FIFA. Uh, oh, downloading and applying online squads. This might take forever. I, Blake, I tried to turn all the music off. The menus were a little less cumbersome in this than they were on NHL. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, welcome to new kickoff. Okay, just go, go. Okay, wait a minute. I might have spoke too soon. Okay, here, let's just jump in. <laughs> uh, what does... I don't know what team I'm on. Okay. I don't... <laughs> Classic map. Okay, yeah, the, 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 a lot of menus. Okay, I, I'm in... Uh, I'm Italy. Okay, here we go. Professional AI. Okay. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, no, I, I thought we were going, but no. Here we go. We're finally going. Okay, here we're, we're going to... Okay, okay, so they, they give you a little training mode in between. That's kind of cool. All right, so I'm just running through. Okay, sweet. I'm trying to get here. Okay, I see. That's cute. Okay, uh, that's sweet. Okay, let's play. So uh, I guess the, they give you lots of little training bits in there to let you get comfortable with the mechanics. I can't hear anything. Is there any audio in this? It's a friendly between oh, two okay. countries that have a real rivalry. No love lost between them at all. And we should expect Alan a firecracker. It's Martin Tyler and Alan Smith on commentary. Yes. Wow, this looks great. Hi, everyone. Whoa, these graphics are incredible. Is this on the pro? Yeah. Wow. It's made at the wonderful EA Canada yep. here in beautiful Vancouver. This is this is essentially the game that makes all the other games possible at Electronic Arts in a way, right? Yeah, pays for all the other ones. Yeah. Uh, Blade Blur, comment. I started playing Spider-Man a week ago and I almost got a platinum trophy in it. Oh yeah, it's very easy to do. It's hard to put that game down. Mario Balotelli is the sole striker today. This is the starting eleven for France. Hugo Lloris starts in goal. Samuel, I'm working on something Spidey related. I can't tell you guys yet, but uh, wish me luck. Today. It'll be cool. Uh, Taz Umtiti. wants to know if there's any news about Fan Expo Vancouver. Uh, uh, not yet. Working Coming soon. Into a really promising position. Oh, what a cheeky attempt. Well, what a start to the game that would have been for So how, how, um, how much time so do you spend early, with the FIFA games quite. usually, Vic? Uh, I usually play... I've had I've had years where I just get completely addicted to the experience. I think the first time the journey was in there, I played many 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 hours, uh, like on the first day that I cracked it open, uh, and then I go back to it and I go back to it and then I, I get some some thoughts. But uh, it depends. Like it, it has to kind of draw me in, you know. Like the sports games come out at a, at a tough time of year. I love them, but so many other games come out and. You, you guys know. I mean, sports games, as good as they are, never feel like it's a reinvention. It feels like a, a refreshment or an iteration, you know? And so it's it's hard for me to be like, oh, my God, stop everything. The one that does do that for me is NBA. But I always imp am impressed with, uh, I don't know, I, the people that make these games clearly love them and love that they get to do it, you know? And they just throw in all kinds of great detail. And I'm always impressed by that. Whoa! Okay. Uh, so so I'm, I'm looking at this screen, not this screen, just so I don't have any lag, but, uh, oh, it's gorgeous. Uh, Thorazine666 says, anytime you want to come to the Great White North, you're more than welcome to stay at my abode. Where, whereabouts do you live in the Great White North, Thorazine? Does he live up in, like, the Yukon or something? <laughs> just about say, or maybe he's talking yeah, to someone else. I don't know. Oh, yeah, we're oh, both wearing the same shirt again. God damn it. What? Yeah. What's happening? The or practically, I'm like, the colors are different, but it looks the same. Right. We don't coordinate this. No. Nope. We really don't. I just, I mean, the thing about plaid is it, plaid shirts are usually pretty warm. 
Yep. So they're good in the fall. Yeah, uh, Blade Blur or somebody asked Blade about why why I was wearing the EPN hoodie is because it's summer attack. and it, it is not summer here in Vancouver. It's nice today. It was nice and sunny, but it's got there's a nice chill in the yeah, air too. You get, you get that breeze in it. It's fall, man. It's happened. Somebody press the fall button. Okay. <laughs> Saw the pass coming and got there first. Come on. <clears throat> Uh, Philip Nijad 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 Philip says hi everyone. Hello. I'm late today. <coughs> Unacceptable. <laughs> must be on time every day. Great work by the goalkeeper. The ball is his. And he's made sure he's protected it. All right, come on. Well, they've got the ball back now. I don't have my flow yet, but it's to be expected. Griezmann. Uh, Paul Casillo, is there any chance you can shout during play in chat so I can go to the bathroom? <laughs> well, they have these devices called phones, that, and you can watch YouTube on your phone. And you can take that with you anywhere into any room in the house, really. True. I, You know, my laptop can go into any room, too. And I've got YouTube on that. <coughs> Come on! Thorazine says, these games are pretty realistic, but still need the ultra-violence in the stands. <laughs> yeah, it'd be good if they had a, a soccer riot or two. Sounds you know, like these, somebody needs to play mutant league these football. People are, yeah, these people are very calm. They're just sitting there very politely, which is very unbecoming of a soccer. It's supposed to be the the it's ideal. Content. Oh, look at that. Tweety. Wasteful Twitch. Pass, unforced error, really. There's a Twitch ad there in the middle of the... Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah on the, uh, the, the, the... On the scoreboards, yeah. Yeah, on the side things. And that's Chiellini, clearing it away. It's very sophisticated. It and looks great, huh? That's a good block. So is this your very first time sitting down playing the FIFA 19? Yeah, I just loaded it on the machine. And I haven't played uh, Pez yet either. So. so you haven't experienced the loot boxes? Yet? No, so no. Well, that's yeah. the burning question that's everyone's going to have, right? The, uh, that's really in the... Um, they, they smartly separated into uh, the ultimate team mode, which is kind of like you're the unlocking sports ball. packs and stuff. In, in a way, the... The card system that they have for their sports games, I can, I can really understand why they do it and why it's successful. Because sports fans collect sports cards, and they always have. And you don't have to play that mode. There's lots of other modes, too. I want to play the journey. This is the third year of the journey. Apparently, it's the end of the, uh, uh, the character story. Oh, they had, like, a nice little trilogy there? Yeah. I, I didn't play much last year actually I have to I have to admit try to pick out someone in the center remember the was it the first journey where they announced it at e3 mm -hmm, where the, the guy was to like, up yeah it was yeah, uncomfortable it was so and weird but it, it turned out to be really cool but we were in the audience for that I think yeah, right that yeah. was the that was the last press conference we went to <laughs> and then it was probably because of that when we were like nah we're not doing this next year uh, you know you know what it was it was like there were certain press conferences that we just didn't get to when we were in Los Angeles, and it, and we would watch them on a, the on a on an internet connection, yeah, and we yeah. were like, "Wow, well, this is very civilized." Yeah. <laughs> and we, we, we don't going, have to stand out in line we, for we an like, hour. And, and then there's another situation we were going to the Ubisoft one, and yeah. then you bumped into some friends, and we just had lunch with them instead. Yep, and like could have been. Yeah, could have been. Or some, maybe it was Ubisoft or someone else. Well, I I really like the way we've done it the last two years. It's been super fun. Okay, so I have some kind of penalty thing here. Sam I am wants to know what's your favorite. Uh oh, uh oh, oh that was cool. Did you get in? No, that's them. What's my favorite? Oh, what's your favorite arcade soccer game? I don't know if he means like arcade machine soccer game or like arcade style. I, I loved the FIFA Street game. FIFA Street Three, I remember just being so blown away by it. Damn you. Oh, they oh, no, no. Look at how gorgeous that is. Wow, I'm really impressed. But yeah, if you mean just arcade style, I guess Rocket League would be mine. Yeah, does, that's does that super count? fun. I don't know. Sure it does, yeah. I love FIFA Street 3, though. I really wish EA would make those street games again, or add the street games into their core sports games. I mean, maybe that's something that, that they do instead of uh, putting the story modes in. Then, the pretty rad. Goes, Matthew Winstone asked, is there a dedicated the fake injury button? <laughs> 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 no, but you can certainly get them in here. I, I mean, the, look at this fidelity, man. You okay. could easily mistake that for uh, watching a, a 
a uh, broadcast. That's going crazy. In the story mode, can you like bribe the FIFA <laughs> officials to, to get the to be the home hosting country? And probably. Again, it's about the ideals of the sport. <laughs> it's, a, it's a picturesque like. The way soccer is played in heaven. Yeah, but I, I mean, there's something to be said for that, you know. Like, I think it's the people that, uh, that you know, kind of pursue it with that genuine passion, that end up having the long careers. You know, if you're only just thinking about the uh, the deals and the money, and you're just obsessing about all of that. So look at this. It's incredible. I think. Oh, it went wow. right through that guy's leg. Wow. Wow. That is gorgeous. Pretty good. So I think it's oh, cool. Oh, look at the guy with the steady cam. That's fantastic. <laughs> this is amazing. Griezmann's corner. That's funny. Oh, that was me. Damn it, I blew it. Um, I was surprised oh, by no. the realism in this game. I was cutting with He's footage from a from FIFA game. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. And the, the, the footage was shaky every time well, they the scored a goal. I'm like, why the hell is he doing that? Is that a problem with the capture unit? <laughs> and someone told me, no, that's how it's supposed to work. Because uh, in real life, it sh in, like when you score, yeah. the camera starts shaking because everyone in the audience is starts freaking out, freaking yeah. out and yeah. it makes like the whole stadium shake. Yeah. So that's they cool. That on this <coughs> oh, that's cool. So the corner to come. There was a big YouTube ad in there too. All right, come on. Uh, D9000, what studio makes the FIFA games? EA Sports. Oh, well, it's EA Canada. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The city. Yeah. EA Canada located in Burnaby mm -hmm. near uh, the BCIT campus. Mm -hmm. uh, three stops on the bus that you get on. You take the, the Millennium Line SkyTrain to uh, to uh, <laughs> to the Renfrew station, I think it is, and then it's three, three stops on the bus. Strong challenge. Come on! Get the ball. Get it. Get it. Dangerous oh. defending, really. They call it EA Vancouver. It was technically EA Canada. Yeah. But people usually call it EA Vancouver. It's technically in Burnaby. Good defensive yes. Play. No cross technically not in no Vancouver. Danger now. Come on. Oh. I don't want to tackle these guys because I'll get a penalty. What's that dude just standing there? Corner for France. Is he part of the... Is he the ref or something? The dude Taken in the great shirt. Yes. Got to get it over. The first Come on. Defending, and they haven't done Linesman. The corner. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Your wife's your wife is texting you. Your watch is gonna go off. Okay, it's okay. I turned, I turned it off. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Cross. It's a good cross. Oh. Gorgeous. Wesley West says, not, "I'm not too Woo! far from. I'm not too far from EA's wet, red, wet, uh, Redwood, Redwood Studios. We've both been there. It's a nice. Uh, Here's the chance to get in the cross. Oh, nice come on, area. come on, come on, come on! Oh my God." The, the the tension as you're in the uh, in the end zone yeah you know, near the near the court near the, near the near the net is just amazing Griezmann trying to find a way through here far up the pitch I don't know all the terms guys I don't play soccer uh, D9000 Redwood is in Silicon Valley basically wow technically Redwood, Redwood City yeah technically it's Come not Silicon Valley but it's basically Silicon Valley it's in San Francisco south of just south of San Francisco are you sure it's not Silicon Valley well but isn't Silicon Valley an actual name of a city or I guess no, no it's not it's just an area yeah, yeah. so it is technically been given the corner. I think so I mean there's it's, no like city well, called it's like game right? game I think had. it's like from uh, Burling game to San Jose well, he, he was so lively from the first whistle really, and he come on Still a chance in there off the goalkeeper. Only Tyler oh. Fisher has a question. Yeah. Is this FIFA better than FIFA 07 on the GameCube? <laughs> <laughs> what did that version, I mean, I, was that version bad? I, 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 think, I think that's honestly one of the challenges that FIFA has with, with gamers, you know, as opposed to, uh, like, hardcore FIFA fan or, like, soccer fans, you know. There is that disconnect on, on what the value add is, you know. Apart, apart from the visuals get a little sweeter every year and the mechanics seem a little bit more. One thing that's always bugged me about sports games too is that every time I interview these people that make them, God, that's gorgeous. It's, uh, they, there's always this, uh, this sort of, like they're almost embarrassed of last year's game, you know, like they, they really put it down. It's like, you guys were talking about how awesome it was last year. Well, they have to do that. 
I know, but it's uh, Apple kind of does that with the iPhone. In, in a way, yeah, you know, but they it, always do that. It's eighty. Five percent better than last year's game. Well, why did last year's game suck? Then? Is, it, is it possible to accidentally or accidentally whale any of these people that are standing there with the ball? Like if, you, if they're standing relatively close to like behind uh, the net, I don't think so. Them by accident? I don't think so. France get the throw. So. France are going to make okay, a change now. So I'm not scoring, but I think this is uh, apropos. Rafael. That's what soccer is kind of like. I wonder if I'll score in, uh, in, in uh, Pro Evolution. Come on! Uh, Thorazine says, awesome. Add me. We need an EPN posse regulating online. Whoa, come on, did come on. Did, did you usually add people when you send friend here. requests, right? Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, so Thorazine, just send Vic a friend request. He'll probably that way. if you're not a friend already. <clears throat> Oh, oh, they got it. Oh, they earned Goal. that. Yeah, they got that. Oh, man. All right, France. Go ahead and celebrate. Are any of the, like, is it, is it like the FIFA team, the same people who played it? Oh, my God, what are they doing to um, they're, they're They're having some fun. That was weird. They're celebrating. Is it like the same players who played in the World Cup? Yeah. Because wasn't that a big controversy? Because France was basically... Like, what do they call that? Poaching players from other countries? I don't know. Like they, like they just gave them all French passports like six months earlier. Just. To uh, uh, I don't know. I have no comment. I remember on that. there was a controversy. I don't know about that. I, I remember them. Like there was some kind of issue. Of, like I saw Trevor Noah talking about them not getting, not being called French or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. I remember that was yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh shit! Oh. Oh, I'm gonna get carded. <laughs> that was a good fight, man. Oh, I'm red carded out of the game. I'm so screwed. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I want to see the replay. Oh, damn it. <laughs> That's funny. Oh. Why is the French logo a chicken? I don't know. That's weird. Good question. Can they draw level here with five minutes left? We're so close to regulation time. There's no way I got this. Come on, go! No, don't kick it away. Vic, who do you cheer for during the world the World Cup? I I honestly don't watch. I know that's sacrilege, but I. What well, you're Canadian? You, know, you're not, you don't have to. Watch. Well, I I mean I'm if an NBA from, guy. I love were, I love hoops, and if I'm gonna watch a sports. Yeah, if you lived thing, in Europe, I'm, you'd yeah, have to watch it. If you're in North America, you don't have to watch the I, I mean, if I'm out at a pub or a restaurant or whatever, it, it's exciting to, you know, sort of be with the crowd and stuff. And I like the game. I like the sport. And I love the video games. I've played every FIFA right from the beginning on the Genesis. But, uh, I mean, Italy's the team that I love. I have, my heart is, uh, since Canada will never be anywhere near the World Cup, Italy is the team that I'm always, I'm always sort of hoping for. I love Italy. Uh, Jordan Cunningham, question. Hey, Vic, do you mm. want a... Uh-oh, this guy's got it. That was dumb. Would you want a... Why would you ever do a ground oh, pass? No. So you got two against you? Yeah, you're two. done. I'm so out. Yeah, you're done. That's it. Uh, yeah. I can't believe these visuals. Holy mackerel, that looks incredible. Uh, Jordan Cunningham, question. Do you want a HD remaster of Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions on the PS4? I, You know, I feel like Marvel sh and Activision should work out something for all of those classic Spider-Man games. I was thinking about the uh, original one for PlayStation 1. All of those could see some kind of beautiful remaster or some kind of Spider-Man collection. Uh, you know, clearly what Spider-Man has done is they've shown and they've proven me out that if you produce something in the licensed realm that has real... I mean, look at FIFA, right? Like, this connects with just regular soccer fans, let alone video game fans. That same thing can be true for any licensed property out there. And, uh, you know, Spider-Man just proved it's the biggest selling first-party game Sony's ever had. If you really put some TLC in there, you're going to get lots and lots of fans jumping on board. And I think Marvel Games has an opportunity to remaster and re-release classic Spidey games that would really resonate with people. I would love that. That would be amazing. But Shattered Dimensions is a, a phenomenal achievement. So was Spider-Man 2. So was uh, Ultimate Spider-Man. I love uh, Spider-Man and Mysterio's Menace on the uh, Game Boy Advance. 
think he was the okay. best performer in a good did you team again? I yeah. certainly did, yes. So if you win in Pez, we'll does Pez become a champion? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you can see that EA makes all the money, and they make just beautiful games, licensed characters, licensed stadiums. We're not hearing all the licensed music. Like, right away, when I put on the soundtrack, I like the tunes. There's this quality that FIFA always has that's this international vibe, too. Like, they, they always introduce new music that just is so enveloping. I mean, there's just such, such beauty to the production and presentation of FIFA. Incredible. Okay, let's throw on Pez and we'll see how that compares Switching right now. Switching over to the Pez. Yeah. The last, the, the, the one game Konami still makes. Yeah, and they uh, dropped a lot of the licensing that they used to spend in favor of what, you know? Not that I'm an expert on what, you know, the different teams or leagues or what. I can't, I can't call them all or na name them all or whatever, but uh, I know that Pez used to have a certain line of uh, stuff that they would pay for and now they're not doing that yeah. question from game freak did you see that esrb has rated a symphony of the night symphony cool. of the night and redondo of blood for ps4 very good so the rumor is they're going to release that's that. awesome it, it, it is crazy that in lieu of us being able to access that's like the playstation one conversation that we've been having ever since the classic was uh, introduced it's crazy that we can't just play those discs on our current machines and it's great that Xbox can sort of rub it in PlayStation's face and say, you know, you can play all these classic games on our current machine. Um, but in lieu of that, it's nice that a lot of these classics are being, uh, you know, re-represented or, or repositioned for us out there. Okay, let's go into kickoff mode, exhibition match. We'll play Ab Italy versus France. Abby Jamison, in response to our Konami shade throwing that we just did, yep. uh, says, uh, I, I'm in favor of Pachinko. <laughs> Isn't that what Konami still makes? Like they make like little Japanese arcade games. I think it was the uh, it's the mobile stuff. But don't they? No, but they still make the the Japanese arcade machines, right? Where you yep. you go and where you see like the video arcades where what do they call them in Japan? They have a name. And Super just, Liga. And there's just like old Japanese women just putting quarters into like these basic Those are gambling pachinko. machines. Yeah, yeah, pachinko. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, I want Superliga is Swedish, I guess, so I want Italy. Here we go. Boom. Lega Italia. Okay. And we are going to play... Um, I was, I was uh, married in Venice, so... Oh, they don't have it. Okay. We'll play uh, Roma. Ooh, it's Sea League. Is that okay? I don't know. Sure. And we will play... Uh, let's play France. Uh, Taz, Dominoes. Taz is asking if we think there's another infamous game in the pipeline. I don't think so. Because they're a pretty small studio, right? Isn't that, that Japanese game is pretty big. Yeah, I asked them. And, and uh, at, I, you know, I think Spider-Man will probably uh, seal the deal on that. I think Sony yeah. would rather spend money on Who makes on infamous? Licensing. That's, um, what That's Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch. And they're yeah. making that Tsushima Japanese yes. game. Yeah. yeah. So I, and Ghost they're, they're a relatively small team, right? Like, uh, there's a couple hundred people in there. But do you think they're all working on that? Ghost no, they. Scene? I know that they're working on something else. I would, I would hazard to guess that they're working on a uh, Sly Cooper game, like a next generation. Sly I'd Cooper rather have game. a new Sly Cooper than anything. Else. At this point, hey, this, kind of this is pretty sweet looking. It's good. Character models. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Wesley West, I always thought okay. of PES soccer as the 2K of soccer. Yeah. Like relative to basketball 2K. Well, there used to be a, a control variance. Like you could really feel like the the nuance of running up and down the, the pitch and your feet sort of hit the turf with a little bit more traction. And there were there was just these sweet little obsessive animation details in uh, in Pez, but I don't know if that's all been eclipsed, you know, because FIFA is probably like ten times the size in terms of uh, you know staff building the game, but also budget and also um, sales. So I would imagine that they they look at this and they go, well, we got to get everything that they have plus all the extra stuff that they can put in. Like there's no story mode in in Pez. Yeah. Hmm. Well, can we fire yeah. all their developers? Well, they still have they still have these guys. They didn't fire everybody. 
Oh, you really feel uh, I feel very far away from the match here. <laughs> it feels like I'm playing an, uh, a, a PlayStation 3 uh, experience, you know? So initial impressions are not good. I mean, it... it it doesn't feel like, oh wow, look at look at the next genness of this. The shadow looks good. Yeah. From the stadium on the field. Yeah, for sure. But that's not what you care about. You want the game to be good. Yeah. Okay, okay, that was cool. I'm seeing in the circle there in the middle of the field, the, what do they call that? The dithering? The middle part of the field? Yeah. Well, what, are they, what is it called in soccer? What is that circle thing called? Midfield. Midfield? Yeah. It, it, it's not a perfect circle. You can see, like... Oh! Ah, I got acquired. I acquired 120 points of GP. I don't know what that means. Jordan okay. Jordan Cunningham. Comment, I wish I could buy all the classic Spider-Man games on PSN. I would love to play the original Spider-Man on PS1 and its sequel. Right? It's like what I've always said. Jordan, you should be able to buy every game ever made. Yeah. Especially ever. these classic ones, yeah. like it's not just I, the good ones, though, Vic. Every game I, I know. ever made, ever. I, you should well, be able to I, buy I think that there's on a current gen machine. Like people would want to play the old Batman's, even if they suck. They, they just they suck. Did you score? Goal! Oh, let us know if the audio is okay, guys. That was that was pretty fun. It feels it feels like classic soccer that I'm playing right now. Heavy Jimson comment out the players are as small as the units in an RTS game. <laughs> they they are, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure I can adjust that with a with a camera. <laughs> it's like transition. yeah, I'm seeing that now. It's like you wanna you wanna select them all and tell them to go fight over there. Totally. <laughs> I got one though. Look at that. That's a nice jib they have too. Oh I can replay it. Boom. Or I can save it. We will save that replay. Let's do it. We got that B roll. Okay, let's go. Oh, and you can edit. Do they have that in FIFA, like editing? Uh... Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Okay. I, I want to quit out. The oh, thing is, what, though... What, what do, how do I stop this? Do they, do they tie, do they tie these camera option. angles to the actual cameras that are there animated on the field? Like, do they have cameras No, I think, I think you have... Because uh, that would add a layer of realism. Yeah. If you could only use the angles from the different cameras they have. Well, I mean, if you look along the edge of the... They have way less stuff going on, you know? The yeah. frame rate seems oh, they pretty got a solid. Jib. They have a jib there, by the way. Yeah. Let's see if I can change the camera angle to be a little bit uh, so. Vic likes this more than FIFA now because you scored. <laughs> Dynamic wide. Okay, here's live broadcast. Here's fan view, vertical. Should we try? Oh, that's cool. Should we try player? Yeah, try that. Oh, it's, it's a bit more. It's just on one player though. That's fine. Let's yeah, see what. Good. That. That's kind of interesting. I can't, you can't really, uh... No, that's gonna give me a headache, but it's, it's cool. It's like roadie cam. That's cool, though. I mean, it's different. It is very herky-jerky, though, isn't it? Yeah. Oh! Yeah, that's giving me a headache. <laughs> it's kind of exciting, though. It's giving me a headache. It's exciting. Yeah, oh, baby! You, that's a penalty! What just no, happened? No, you kicked no, that no, guy. No, 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 no. Was that you? Yeah, that was You me. kicked that no, guy, No, I did Vic. not. No, fair you and totally square. totally tripped that guy. Oh, he got it from me. Come on. This is way more exciting to stream it this way, I'll tell you. And to, and to like, play it this way. I'm very, very... Shame you, right now. <laughs> you tripped that guy on purpose. No, I didn't press the circle button. I pressed the square button. If I press the circle button, I'll be tripping people. Want to see somebody get tripped? Let's right, get this guy. Uh, D9000. Boom! <laughs> 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 what? Come on, what? Give me, oh, give me a break. I was all ball. Come on. Look, you saw me, George. You did, didn't you? Come on. Come, oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Let's watch the replay. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, dude. That wasn't as bad as your other one. No. You should have got a card for Oh, no. Game. Penalty kick. <laughs> uh, oh! Nice. So D9000 was watching us on the bus. Oh, yeah? His bus stop is coming up, so time to turn off the TV. <laughs> that's, why, why do you have a TV on the bus? That's, that the, be, <laughs> that's the world we live in now, right? It's incredible. Just, I have a visual in my brain now of somebody walking around on a bus with like a big CRT monitor <laughs> yeah. and watching TV right on the bus. <laughs> oh! 
I don't know um, where the ball is. Where, where's the ball? Taz wants to know if we're going to pop in a Discord more often. Hey, what? Are, oh, Taz, yes. Taz is asking, uh, yeah. Yes, we are. Absolutely. I'll try to pop in later today. I've got um, a couple things that I have to work on after we're done streaming. Discord. I'm going to switch to a different angle because it's really disorienting. Uh, Tyler Fisher is saying he wants to play a game called Tricky Towers with you. Is that a PS4 game? Think, what is that on? I think there's something new, yeah. Somebody was texting me or tweeting me. What, what is Tricky Towers? Right? No idea. Well, let me Google it. Okay. Let's see what the old Google says. Okay, here we go. Okay, live broadcast. And that has added a whole new complexion to the game. Oh, it came out in 2016. Yeah, it's on the PS4. It's kind of a puzzle-y game. Kind of like Jenga. Man, this is not a good angle either. How is this angle different? And that's, like, it's just not keeping up with the, the ball. I don't, I like, the side view is not that great. Let's try player, blimp. What was, what was it before? I think it's just wide. wide yeah. yeah, okay, well, let's zoom in. Uh, let's see if that works out better. That feels better. Yeah. That's kind of the same angle that FIFA had, right? It's got through. Get in there! I feel like FIFA's a little bit further away. But this still works to play it in. And he's cut it out. I don't know. I mean, these these characters seem so piddly compared to what was in FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> don't they? Maybe it's the color of their jerseys. Yeah. Is, are they called jerseys in soccer? Or yeah. Come here. Under. Go! Oh, nice hit. That was great. The animations are pretty fun. Come on. Is there a game system called the Nomad? Yeah, that's the old Genesis. Oh. It was the, it's like the first Switch. You can hook it up to a TV and you can put uh, your cartridges in. Well, it's amazing, I have one of those. I hear Nomad, I think of the robot from Star Trek. Right. There's a, there's a robot named Star Trek. There's a robot named Nomad in Star Trek. Gotcha. Oh, so they get a penalty kick, okay. Or a corner kick. Here we go. Uh, hey Vic and Blake, what are your favorite chocolate bars? Mm. You don't eat sugar, so you, I, you I, can't answer this. I don't, well, I, I remember the old, I don't even know if they make them anymore, but I used to love the Eat More bars. Yeah, they still have those. I thought those were great, because they actually felt less chocolatey, but they were still sweet. And they felt like they were somewhat healthy for you. So I, I felt less guilty eating them. I try to avoid junk food like that, but I do yeah. partake once in a while. Yeah. I guess Wonder Bar is pretty good. Mm. I like the, cre the caramel in it. Caramel in it. Yeah. Uh, also, um, I like O'Henry Crunchy Bars. Kit Kat. Mm, I'm not like really a Kit Kat, Kat guy, because they're just... Uh, they're just chocolate covered wafers. Right. Wafers are. Boring. Oh, Coffee Crunch was pretty good. Coffee Crunch is pretty good. I like things that are like crunchy and also have like a combination of crunchiness and softness. Too. Yeah. And then I've been I I went crazy on Cliff Bars because. Yeah, you you don't eat those as much anymore. Right? No, I'm yeah, off of that. Now. now I eat a lot of dates. I remember like when I first started working for you, like in 2007. Was that the end of the game? Uh, or was that halftime? I remember there was a point where you were eating like nothing but Cliff Bars. Well, too many of them, yeah. yeah, and it was yeah. Like, what, you got a problem. Yeah, it's not, it's not good for you. Yeah. <laughs> Second half, okay. This is okay. This is not terrible. It's not like it's uh, uh, FIFA has completely embarrassed this experience. It's still fun. Oh no, we, we have Americans asking us what's a coffee crisp. I'm assuming ND, NH, Sam, you're American? Because coffee crisp, I think, is only in Canada. Did I say, did I say Coffee Crisp or I, I, Because I was shocked to find out that a lot of my favorite candy bars are Canadian specific. Right. Like, they don't exist in the U.S. Which is crazy, right? Yeah. Because all the marketing would be tagged onto the American yeah. channels that we get. Well, apparently, and I, I actually, Whoa. I remember reading an article about this. Like, Americans and Canadians have different tastes when it comes to junk food. Mm. Americans like things that are more salty. Okay. Whereas Canadians like things that are more, like, caramel. Oh! Is his name Shwarma? That was good. That's What's his last fun. name? Shwarma? I'm not sure. <laughs> You're hungry, aren't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I have a Shwarma place by my house, but it sucks. Uh, the guy who owns it is a dick. El Shwarawi. 
Oh, N- Nehis DeSam. N- I don't know. Sorry. NHS, N- NHS Adam. Yeah. Uh, says, I love cos- Coffee Crisp. Ah. So he's familiar with it. Or she's familiar with it. Okay. Coffee Crisp is pretty good. Are Purdy's chocolates, are they all across Canada, or is that just in Vancouver, like a BC thing? I don't know. Purdy's chocolates are pretty good. I don't know if they exist anywhere else in Canada. I wanted to say they're like a PC thing. Come on! Oh, here's a good one. This might start a lively debate. Okay. Jordan Cunningham question. Hey, Vic how do, and Blake, how do you feel about pineapple on pizza? Uh, I'm okay with it. I, I like Hawaiian pizza. Yeah, I'm it's okay. not my favorite, but I, I like it. I don't get people who... There's a lot of people who think it's like the worst thing ever. It's fine. Like, I, I'm, I'm pretty much a vegetarian. I eat seafood. But um, so I would never have a ham and pineapple pizza. But I'm okay with pretty much any vegetables or anything on there. My favorite kind of pizza is like a, a Greek pizza with feta cheese and all. On the West Coast, you can get pretty much anything on a pizza. There's some pizza places that'll do really weird stuff. Eggplant on pizza is actually no. Oh, I'm using my FIFA controls. I wanted to cross it. <laughs> Damn it. I'm having fun. These are good games. Yeah, see, Taz is saying in all caps, death to pineapple on pizza. There's some people who get really passionate about their <laughs> hatred for it. It's like, bro, if you don't like it, just don't eat it. It's fine. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. I like pineapple pizza in Hawaiian pizza. It's good. It's not my favorite. My favorite, I guess, would be... We got any uh, any anchovy aficionados or apologists? If anyone likes anchovies, let us oh. know. Oh! Oh, they didn't score. You know what's good on pizza, too, is broccoli. Do you ever get, like, a veggie pizza? Oh, yeah. With broccoli on it? Yeah. I think everybody's getting hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Powder Keg says, I eat. I make sure to eat super healthy so I can drink more vodka. There you go. <laughs> yeah, eating nothing but salad, and that, and that gives you uh, the ability to get... Junk food in Powder keg is an anchovy of fish. No, no, pow- powder keg is saying you should have said anchovy of fish. <laughs> Aficionado, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come on! Come on! Oh! Okay. Boom. Okay, now, now Jordan Cunningham is asking what our favorite cereal is. Uh, I like Count Chocula because that still exists here. I, I, I like uh, I like like fruit juice flavored cornflakes, like the old staples, <laughs> or sweetened uh, cornflakes, or oatmeal. I like shreddies. I love oatmeal. As I get older, I really appreciate just oats. There's very few that I don't. I don't eat breakfast cereal that often, so I don't know what my. Come on, I'm crossing this cross pass. Here we go. To no one. Oh, Golden Come on. Grams are pretty good. Probably Golden Grams. Yeah, I don't eat any of that junk food, guys. I have to bring, uh, whenever I see my sister in the UK, I have to bring Lucky Charms. They tried selling Lucky Charms in Europe, and they got, the, in the places where it wasn't banned outright, it was, <laughs> like, it never caught on. People just never ate it. They're like, I'm not going to feed my kids marshmallows for breakfast. Are you crazy? I, that's insane, yeah. But here in North America, it's like, yeah, whatever. Just eat a bowl of sugar before yeah. I go to school. Maybe have a Pop-Tart as well. Yeah. <laughs> just give the kids some crack. Why don't you? Like, it's probably better for them than a bowl of sugar. <laughs> Oh! 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 It went off his back. That was cool. That was a great piece of animation right there. Watch the watch the back uh, wearing, or like, watch the replay. Rubber cooking gloves or yeah, like could dishes. Be, he could be like doing some dishes. Yeah. dishes. Yeah. Check this out. It bounces off of his. Uh, he stops it. Boom! And the bounced. Oh, off, bounced that is off cool. Of, that, it bounced off of the uh, the that post, cool. hit his head, and went back in. That's that incredible. Cool. Just like you planned. Or is that yeah. them scoring? Look at that. Is that you that got oh, scored? Or? Yeah, I got scored. Oh, okay. oh he's That's so good. sad. That's, That's good. That's good. You really sad now. <laughs> so I have um, camera controls on this replay. Here we go. Let's see what this looks like. Vic, have you ever eaten at Mongolian Grill? Yeah, that was pretty good. Who's asking that? Uh, the, the Adrian Leon. I was at Mongolia Grill once, mm-hmm. and uh, a kid wandered into where the guy was cooking, 
and the kid, the guy like bat and knocked the kid over. No it's way. Like a little toddler kid. Oh no way. And he like bat he didn't see him and he kind of. Oh, was the kid, like, the kid okay? Yeah, the kid was fine. Nothing hot or anything spilled on him. No. It was like a situation where I felt bad about laughing at it. Oh okay. <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> you couldn't help yourself, huh? I couldn't help, but like, it was kind of funny the way the kid felt. <laughs> oh, man. But then I felt really bad later. I, I was a teenager. That was the day so was Blake day. learned about empathy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come on. Yes! Oh! I got a, I acquired 300 GP though. Labor Blur is asking who likes Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio. Ah, uh, that's gonna be funny. I think Jake Gyllenhaal is good in everything. He's pretty solid, except for Prince of Persia. I he was good in that too. He, but he wasn't a good Persian. He was not. Yes, not, Persian. not a very good, believable Persian prince <laughs> at all. No, it was like when Nolan North was cast in Prince of Persia. Remember that? <laughs> oh God, yeah, I that was so bad. <laughs> Yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal would be the worst actor to play, like, Martin Luther King. Was it Yuri Lowenthal who played Prince of Persia in The Sands of Time with a Persian accent? That's funny. Because he was good in that. He's a great voice actor, Yuri Lowenthal. Let's find out. He plays Spider-Man, for those that don't know, in the, the new one. And he's played him on, the, uh, on, on some of the animated stuff, too. Yeah. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! Voice. Oh, I don't want the Get it in there! God damn it. Ah! These textures are really weird here. Look yeah, it is uh, Yuri Lorenthal. Look at this. That's, that's really weird. Yeah, Yuri Lorenthal. Yuri Lowenthal. Yeah, played the, pr played the prince. And you know what, though? With voice actors, it's okay. Like, well, you have a white not if you, guy. not if you sound like N Nolan North, though. Not yeah. if you are. Yeah. yeah. Nathan Drake as like, Prince of Persia. Like that a was white terrible. guy, a white guy can voice a black character if it's just a vocal part. But if it's a movie, obviously that's totally. Weird. Yeah. But yeah, vo vocally is. So I lost twice. Uh, but did you have fun though, Vic? I had fun in then both you games. Won, then you won. Yes. So that, see, that's how you win in games. And that's how we won. And let's play in chat. That was super fun. But Obviously, on, no. I can't decide a victor from uh, both of these games. Oh, what's games your first yet. impression? FIFA crushes Pez. That's my first impression. It just it, it feels slicker and more robust and better looking. And so, if you, if, which game are you more excited to play? FIFA. Yeah, I, I'm more excited to peel the onions of FIFA because I, I, that's what I know about FIFA is yeah. that it's not just the soccer experience, which is going to feel kind of familiar across both. You can nitpick about the nuance and. You know, honestly, I don't know enough about, uh, you know, the intricacies of the sport or the histories of the sport to kind of pick up on every, um, you know, sort of radical difference in animation style or control variants. But uh, um, I had fun playing both. The frame rate seems, I don't know if it's a little faster running through here because there's less uh, stuff moving around in the backgrounds as FIFA, but... Um, they were both fun to play, but FIFA feels like uh, it, it's just going to give you way more at the banquet. You know, like you're just going to have lots and lots of stuff to Makes unlock. Sense. It's a bigger game. Right? It's a bigger game. Okay, bye yeah. everyone. That's uh, that's going to do it for our Let's Play and Chat and our episode of EP Live. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Hope you guys had a good time. Thank you for joining us, Thorazine666 and Tyler Fisher and G-Rock and Blade Blur and Sam I Am and... Uh, Abby Jamison, all great to see everybody. Thank you very much. We'll be back again tomorrow with another EP Live, so make sure you come back for that. In the meantime, check out the other content we've been making, and if you dig it, hit subscribe and that little bell if you're so inclined. Join up and become an EPN member. We'd love it if you did. Uh, but just watch our stuff, all right? Thanks for watching, everybody. Play forever.